Oh. My. God. I thought I was really down for a good spook in this October, but this has struck a fear into my heart against which no courage could battle. On r slash ask math, cutie girl underscore love anime says how to solve this cross math. She asked for help, saying that they're doing long-distance learning, and she's getting confused because her professor has not explained how to tackle this sort of exercise. Well, no wonder. Just look at it. Taking a closer look at the worksheet, we see it says Assessment 3, Problem Solving Strategies, and this first problem is a very simple exercise in logic with one easy answer. And then we come to this horrific snake-like beast where we're supposed to place the numbers 1 through 9 in the boxes to make the equation true. It's all basic arithmetic, but as you can see, it's quite a lengthy equation. And if the problem had been presented without this awkward snaking shape, then instead of looking kind of like a fun math puzzle, it would look how it actually is, which is utterly ridiculous. It's worth mentioning the OP refers to this as cross math, like a crossword puzzle style thing. I think she means. Now, cross-number puzzles are a thing. They're a beloved pastime among arithmetic enthusiasts. But much like in a cross-word puzzle, the key challenge in a cross-number puzzle is that multiple numbers intersect and share components, which doesn't happen in this abominable homework assignment. So how can we even begin to solve this problem? Well, spoilers, we're not going to have a satisfying answer to that question. There's no great trick here to dispel this exercise. We will arrive at an answer though, so rest easy with that knowledge. Certainly the last thing that will be done with this equation is the subtraction of 10, and at the end of the day, the result needs to equal 66. So we could just forget about this last part, the minus 10, and say after this division here, we must get 76. So then in the original problem, the minus 10 would of course get us to 66. And people typically don't do math in this shape, so we might want to straighten things out before we start cranking out potential solutions. And it's just another horrible facet of this problem that when you try to duplicate it in a more ordinary way, you have to be really careful because it is easy to mix up these plus and divide signs. As long as you're careful though, you can copy down the problem accurately, but then we're hit with another pressing question, which is PEMDAS. Or PEMDAS? Are we supposed to be doing this just from left to right, or are we supposed to respect the order of operations? Just for an example, here at the start, if we put one two and three down and follow a standard order of operations, then we have to do the multiplication and the division first. So we would have 13 times two, which is 26, divided by three and plus one. So 26 over three plus one or 29 over three. However, if we don't follow the order of operations, then we just go from left to right. So one plus 13 is 14 times two is 28, divided by three gives us a different result, which is 28 over three. Now, if this was an easy problem, it wouldn't be such a big deal. We could make both assumptions, try both ways and see what ends up working. But this exercise is anything but easy and could require an enormous amount of work. Let's just do the meta math here to figure out how much trouble we're really in. There's not much more we can do than just guessing which number goes in which box and seeing if it works. We have nine choices for which of the numbers one through nine goes in box one, and for every nine possibilities in box one, there are eight numbers left that we could choose to go in empty box number two, so we'd multiply by eight. For all nine times eight possibilities of the first two numbers that could be put in the empty boxes, there are seven numbers remaining that could go in the third empty box, so multiply by seven, and so on. There would then be six numbers remaining, and five, four, three, two, and we would be stuck with only a single number remaining, 
at the final box. This is what we call a factorial, written with the exclamation point or the bang symbol. It counts the number of ways of ordering nine objects, or in this case, the number of ways we could place the numbers one through nine in these nine empty boxes to create an equation that may or may not be true. Now, how big is this number? It's about 300, so we could reasonably check all the possibilities if, no, just kidding, it's 362,880. Well, hey, that's less than half a million, so that's not so bad, right? Well, not really, because for each possible solution, we would want to calculate it following the order of operations and not following the order of operations. So if we check PEMDAS and check left to right for each possibility, that doubles the amount of work to about 725,000 possibilities. You may ask, why is there ambiguity about the order of operations? Why wouldn't we just assume we're supposed to follow the order of operations? The fact of the matter is that with puzzles like this, there is often an assumption that the operations should be done in sequence, top to bottom or left to right. And since this doesn't say otherwise, we're left to wonder which we're supposed to do. And so we have a whole lot of work on our hands. Here, just for example, is a puzzle of a similar flavor that we looked at previously, and this puzzle explicitly says that the calculations should be done in sequence, that is from left to right or top to bottom. In my opinion, if you're going to present an expression with multiplication and division written like this, then you assume the burden of clarifying how the operations should be carried out. Since the problem author neglected that burden, it falls to us. So how bad would it be to check all of the 725,000 possibilities for this stupid homework problem? Well, for each ordering of the numbers 1 through 9, we would have to complete 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 operations to determine if we end up with 76. Again, we don't actually have to do that last minus 10. In computer jargon, these operations are called flops or floating point operations. So if there is, say, one unique solution to this problem among all 725,000 possibilities, we may have to perform 11 operations 725,000 times or about 8 million flops. For a young lad trying to work this problem out on paper, let's be generous and say each operation takes one second. Probably some of the addition and subtraction wouldn't take quite that long, but it will be made up for by the division and multiplication and the working with fractions. So I think one flop per second is a conservative estimate for how long it would take to complete the 8 million flops. So then worst case scenario, a student diligently works working out this problem could spend 8 million seconds cranking out arithmetic, or 92 days, 14 hours, 13 minutes, and 20 seconds. What level of math is this? I think cutie girl underscore love anime is in a remedial underworld mathematics class. All right, well, that was very much a worst case analysis. Let's try to be a bit smarter about this and see if there's any realistic hope of solving this problem without computer assistance. Let's just say we are going to be good boys and respect the order of operations. So then we're back down to only 362,880 possibilities. This has the advantage of making it a little bit easier to test guesses on a calculator, since those generally respect the order of operations, and it makes some of the orderings of the numbers 1 through 9 duplicates that can be skipped. If we're following the order of operations, then this chunk of multiplication and division will have to be carried out first, and then these two numbers will be added to the result. That means these two numbers are doing identical things and could be swapped without changing the final result. And that cuts the number of orderings we would need to check in half now to just 181,440 possibilities. Also, over here, we have two numbers that are just going to get multiplied. That product of two numbers is going to get divided by something, but certainly the order of the numbers getting multiplied together doesn't matter. So we have another pair of numbers that are interchangeable, which again lets us cut the number of possibilities we need to check in half. And now we're looking at a slightly more manageable 90,720 ordering that we would need to check. There's room to rule out other potential solutions also. There are two divisions in this problem. Here, 
and over here. And at the end of the day, the results of those two divisions are just getting added together. This means each division must result in an integer, or the two divisions must give complementary fractional parts, which total to one. So for example, if in one ordering we had an odd number here divided by two, that would give us a fractional part of 0.5. And thus, it will be necessary for the division over here to also give a fractional part of 0.5, because at the end of the day, our result needs to be an integer, 66 or 76 if you just skip the minus 10. So any ordering of numbers that fail this division test of the two division results adding to an integer, we could skip. Unfortunately, carrying out this logic to rule out possible solutions isn't as simple as the previous reductions we made. But at the very least, if we were checking solutions, we could always begin by checking these divisions, and if they're not going to add to an integer, we can move on without doing the whole computation. Then, in some cases, we wouldn't have to do 11 operations, but instead only Five. We would have to do four operations to check the results of these two divisions, and then we'd have to do one more operation to make sure that they add to an integer. With the assistance of a computer program, I determined this would rule out a significant 333,648 potential orderings. And like before, we could divide this number by four to get 83,412, since each potential solution that fails this division test has four identical versions with inconsequential order differences. And this means of the 90,720 meaningfully different orderings we'd have to check, 83,412 of them could be ruled out after just five operations. And then we need 11 operations for the remaining 7,308 possibilities. That's a total of about half a million operations to check all potential solutions. If again, we calculate at one operation per second, this comes out to only five days, 18 hours, 10 minutes, and 48 seconds. A huge improvement over the previous worst case scenario of 90 days, although still not ideal for a basic homework assignment. The good news is today's personal computers are way faster than a human at performing floating point operations, and they could easily check all these possibilities in less than a second. If it turns out there is no valid solution to this equation when we follow the order of operations, a human would have to check every single one of those 90,720 distinct possibilities to figure that out. But I ran a program that found 128 solutions to the problem, which you can see here. If we divide that by four, we get 32 meaningfully distinct solutions. This means of the 90,720 meaningfully distinct orderings we were going to check, at worst, we'd check 90,592 of them before we'd have to find a solution. This doesn't change the actual worst case very much, but at least we know that a solution will be found. So this is great. If we follow the order of operations, we can find solutions. And if we randomly pick one, we have over 3% of a percent chance to make the equation true. But what if we don't follow the order of operations? Perhaps we might even conclude that if not following the order of operations results in more solutions, then perhaps we were never supposed to follow PEMDAS in the first place. So using a bunch of parentheses, I changed my program to just compute from left to right, and believe it or not, found 144 solutions, all distinct from the 128 solutions that followed PEMDAS. Why don't we just try out this first one for an example and to finally see this equation be made true. The numbers are one, two, four, seven, five, eight, three, six, and nine. One plus 13 is 14, times two is 28, divided by four is seven, plus seven is 14, plus 12 is 26, times five is 130, minus eight is 122, minus 11 is 111, plus three is 114, times six is 684, divided by nine is 76. Well, there you go. Unless we're missing some wild trick here, out of the about 725,000 possibilities a student might 
check to solve this problem. 272 of them work. So, uh, yeah, wow. Pretty awful assignment. But, you know, I can't help but keep hope in my heart that maybe we are missing something. So I did a search for this image, and as always, the AI took a stab at it. The AI said, this approach is incorrect. This interpretation is too complex. This is an incorrect way to solve the puzzle. This solution does not work. This is also incorrect. This is also incorrect. This solution also fails. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. So the AI did about as good as you would expect, but then, I found an actual answer key on numeraid.com. We already know the problem doesn't have a unique answer, so what could the answer key possibly have? One unique answer that you arrive at using some wizardly math book smelling technique? Well, I checked out the math book that this problem is allegedly based on, and I flipped through the book and found nothing at all like this. So I guess we're left with no recourse but to get a Numeraid membership and watch the video solution. So I would need this to be 76, and then... Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> so I know that value would have to be 76. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm going to start here. I know if okay. I do 1 plus 13, that's going to be 14. Yeah. 14 times 2 is going to give me 28. 28 um, divided by 2 is going to give me 14. <laughs> 14 plus 2 is going to give me 16, plus 12 is going to give me um, 28, times 1 is going to give me 28, minus 2 is going to give me 26, minus 11 will give me 15, and then I know that I need to have a 76, so I know that... Um, <clears throat> If I do 11, mm -hmm. <laughs> so 76, I need that to be um, 76 times 2. Mm -hmm. I'm fill this in with 152. <laughs> And then I know that to get from 15 to 152, this one would have to be 137. <laughs>